I can't start this video without a massive thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys, I would never have been able to buy this tarantula. Oh, I'm so excited. And welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So I just woke up and realised that I had a couple of parcels. So that means a couple of videos. And in that parcel was my order for the Afona Pelma Hensi Adult Female Tarantula. Now I've always wanted an Afona Pelma and Calcodes being the most popular in the hobby, a beautiful, beautiful tarantula, I was torn between which one to go for. The spider shop had various ones in, and uh, I asked my patrons basically, which should I go for? And my patron Bobby, she voted for me to get the Hensi. Now the Hensi is one of the least popular Afona Pelmas in the hobby, at least within the UK, and that's what drew me to it even more. I'm the type of bloke that likes misfits. You know what I mean? I like the gimp animals, animals with missing limbs. I like uh, animals that need to be rehomed. I, I like all the sort of misfits in the world, even my friends. Yeah, sorry guys, you're all misfits. But that's just how I am, it's always how I have been. So I'm so glad that Bobby chose the ANC. Now the exciting thing about this video is this is the first time I'm ever going to be opening an adult tarantula on this filming area, Kamora Bee. Now, I know I've actually already done the unboxing, so the title might seem a little misleading, but unpotting a tarantula on Kamora Bee, that doesn't work. There's, there's no ring to that whatsoever. So the box is open, but this pot has never been opened. It is still sealed, as you can see here. So yeah, let's see what shots we get. Let's see if this works, or is it gonna be a disaster? Who knows? Let's check this tarantula out now. So, gently removing the tab. Okay, we'll lay it down. Let's do this. Ooh, we got some booty. So what I'm trying to do here guys is pull out the tissue, there we go, okay, so, oh don't roll, Are you ready? Oh my goodness. So here we have it guys, adult female Afona Pelma Hensi. Now these tend to be a little bit more skittish or so I've heard than some of the other Afona Pelma, which is why this one could well be quite exciting to deal with and she's actually facing the way she could run up and over, which is what I don't want to happen. But look at her. Now ideally I'd like to get her off the tissue, but without her bolting. So I'm going to try grabbing this tissue over here. This is all freehand work. Oh, we've got some movement. This is all freehand work, guys, because unfortunately, one issue I have with Kimura Bee is setting up this. It, it, it just, it, these tanks block the way for the legs. So it's actually very, very difficult. So this is why a lot of my work is freehand on Kimura Bee. Oh, she's moving, she's moving. So gently though. Now this isn't the typical environment for an Afoma Pelma Hensi. They wouldn't be in these sort of lush, mossy woodlands like we've got here. But don't she camouflage well? Look at that, look. If you didn't know she was there from a high distance and you were just traipsing along, so this is at head height to me now. 
may not even notice her. So let's have a little talk about why these are so underrated. Why most keepers don't really choose the Hansi. Well, I've got to be honest with you, I haven't got a clue because she is stunning. But I think it's because it's just your basic brown variant. And although Calcodes is also kind of pretty plain, there is something about them and it's a bit more of a lush brown. But to me, I actually far prefer the Hensi over others. I think uh, Richard, my good friend from Tarantula Collective, even once said that these are like the ugly duckling in his collection. And you know what, we all have personal preference. And I'm not hating on Richard in any way. He's not the first one I've heard to say something on similar lines. But as I said, I've always got a thing for animals that are underrated. And I can't tell you a single thing I dislike about this tarantula. So, from my personal opinion, let's take a little look at her appearance. So she has lighter brown followed by darker brown femurs. She's got that sort of crisp beige carapace and her abdomen has that sort of darker greyish brown effect to it almost i can't think of the word biscuit brown perhaps it's the kind of tarantula that you would imagine an old person having right you know when you go into old people's houses and their decor is a little bit different with their flowery wallpaper and that weird smell <laughs> you know what i'm saying though right if they were a tarantula collector I think the Ahensi is exactly what you would find in an old person's home. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you agree. Do you even know what I'm trying to say here? Like, or am I just babbling a load of rubbish? Oh. Are you an old person's tarantula? Yes, you are. Yes. So I will have to move that stump if she starts to crawl behind because she can get it in the far corner of Kimura Bee, which is more difficult to get her out of. But so far, she's just been so slow, so calm. It's lovely. Now, I did forget to tell you I am naming this tarantula, and her name is Bobby. Named after Bobby, who asked me to get her. She is, isn't she? She's going to be a pain. She's going to go exactly where I don't want her to go. They're like... They're almost like naughty school kids, aren't they? they? They do the opposite of what the adults want them to do. <laughs> See ya then, you pain in the booty. Oh, look. We had a little bit of spinneret action there, although she seems to have stopped now. There we go. Ba-dom. Ba-dom. She's playing the drums with her spinnerets. Ba-dom. Yeah, don't make, get too comfortable in her, girl. This is not actually your home. However much it would be cool to live here. Whoa, I just missed that on the camera, guys. So I was going to just move this log, like so. And uh, she attacked at nothing. I literally went like this. And she slapped. She slapped down. She's a moody gal. There's me saying how docile and lovely she is. When in fact, she's a grump. So in that case... Where's me tongs? Always leaving them in stupid places. So I'm just doing this for my safety, although she couldn't actually hurt me bad. Um, if she were to climb up and have her grump on my hand, I would get bitten. So it's always safety first. Oh, sorry, gal. There we go. This is the direction we want you to go in. You beautiful Grumposaurus, ye. So let me know in the comments as well, do you own an Aphomapelma Hensi, or do you have any other Aphomapelma? Which is your favorite? Now I was considering actually handling this girl while she was on Kimura Bee, but after the little snap that she had when moving the log, I don't think it's wise for me to be messing around with her, which is a shame because I think Aphomapelma are like big cuddly teddy bears and you just want to give them a squeeze. But, uh, you know what, if she would have bit me and I were to, to fling my arm out of reaction, then I could injure this tarantula, so it's not worth it. It is absolutely not worth it. I just wish I caught that little slack on the camera. 
it shocked me actually just totally unexpected and that's something you have to bear in mind when you're a tea keeper that temperaments can differ from specimen to specimen you could have the most docile of genus or docile of species and that doesn't mean that your particular specimen isn't going to be slightly more defensive or food reactive and another thing to take into consideration is how you keep them a tarantula is going to be a lot more defensive in a home that it's less comfortable in if it doesn't have the space to hide it's going to react but we're not going to get into that on this video so she's had her little wander around Kamorabi now and I think it's time to cup her up and sort out an enclosure for her oh but I can't stop looking at her she is beautiful is she not I could I could just watch her all day but unfortunately I have other things to do too I have a child to look after and I have two more animals that arrived today that I have to sort out for a separate video so this is not a suitable place to do any kind of cupping but I just wanted to see her reaction nope she's gonna crawl under oh you pain Right, where's me blimmin' tongs now? I've done it again! I've done it again! In fact, I think we'll use the tissue to try and guide her backwards. Back you go, gout. Oh! Don't know if that caught on camera. She snapped again then. She was not happy at that. So it was just a warning. There was no bite but she's not happy. So she's probably stressed out being in a post and then being in a place with all these lights on her and me sticking a camera in her face. So we do need to kind of get her somewhere more suitable. Okay, heart attack number two. So I thought, oh, I'll just cut her off the camera and went to rest my camera on here. And my adult female Cambridge eye went skips. I'm not sure. Oh, it's not gonna do it now. I put my camera down like this. Oh, oh, no, she's running away this time. But last time she just did laps along the top. Will you spiders behave today? I swear, honestly. Right, I need to cup this girl. Okay, so she is in there now. So we're going to be turning off the Kamorabi light. My ring light broke yet again, so I'm back to this one. Going to leave her somewhere nice and dark in the corner there so that she feels a little bit more, oops, a little bit more safe while I sort out the enclosure for her. There we go, some nice shade. So they don't like being exposed in the light, guys. It will make them defensive. It will make them uncomfortable. So if I have them in a pot for a while while I'm going to be sorting something, I try and put them in a shaded area so they can feel like they're in a sort of burrow, as it were. Right, let's get this enclosure sorted. So here is the home that I have designed. It's got a deep substrate on one side, coming down on the front for visibility. We've got a hide made out of an older bit of cork bark. The substrate I've used is a mixture of topsoil, cocoa fiber, and even a bit of sand to give it that more arid feel. Now the moss used in here is not damp moss. This is very, very old dried moss. I was trying to get a sort of scrubland effect I'm not 100% happy with this enclosure, but I would like to move it into something a little different down the line. Here is a top view, so we've also got a bit of leaf litter. I thought that bit of wood was kind of cool, the way it pokes out and the tarantula can hide over up to the side. I would like to have it a little bit deeper for her, although as adults I've read that they tend to be a bit more open. When they were younger, they tend to burrow the usual way with spiders. However, I would like to give her a little bit of a deeper substrate in a future home. And they're bulldozers anyway, guys, so she's likely to just do what the hell she wants with this. Now, as you see, there's no water dish in. I say this in nearly every video. I put my water dishes in after, unlike most keepers. And the reason being is just I like to see the tarantula kind of settle in for an hour or two then I pop the water dish in because they're always in a, a damp environment when they arrive anyway um, through the tissue so they're fully hydrated um, so yeah a water dish will be added in in about an hour's time 
yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that. Let me know what you guys think. Right, so you guys all know the drill. Enclosure's here, tarantula is here. So I'm going to pop the bottom of this. Oh, this tub is being irritating. Come on. And then just allow her... Oh, no, she crawled back up. That's fine. <laughs> oh, that, I didn't press record doing that part. Well, she came to the bottom, I lifted it up. Silly me. But there she is in our home. Now I'm not sure how many of you are new to tarantula keeping so I will say it again anyway. Tarantulas don't tend to feed when they're a little uncomfortable in a new environment so we're going to give her some time to settle down and we can feature a feed in a future video. But there she is. And she's got a reasonable amount of space. As I said I would like to upgrade her a little bit. Oh look, he's my fluffy teddy bear Bobby, yes, yeah I talk to him like they're cats and dogs sometimes, but I can't keep cats and dogs so this is my version of a cute fluffy animal. So that's going to be it for today's video I think, we're going to let her settle in and I'll give you updates in the future. If anyone else would like to support me on Patreon, we have a private uh, Patreon Facebook page where you can engage with me any hours of the day and uh, you get to aid in the choices for animals that I buy as a thanks for your support. So if you want to see what else dwells within the realm, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos, usually Wednesdays and Sundays, occasionally Wednesdays and Saturdays. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye, Bobby. Bye.